So in this video, I'm going to talk about Miller index notation. And I thought that I could use this worksheet that I gave you to take home and practice with uh, to step through some of these problems. Now, I, I know that I didn't label up and down. So some of you might, you know, hold it, you know, like this instead. Uh, it's all good. Uh, you can always, in fact, you know, turn the sheet upside down if you want to have more problems to solve. Uh, but this is the way that I'm, I'm going to be working with them. So on this first page, our job is to identify the directions that are shown here. And, and the way you do that is you, you know, look at the, the direction that's drawn, you identify the tail, and that's where we're going to put our origin. So got X, Y and Z. So we got a, a right-handed a, a right-handed coordinate system. And then in order for us to get from the tail to the tip, we're going to go by plus one half X minus one Y and minus one half Z, right? So we went one half minus one minus one half. And we can't uh, have, we can't have fractions. So we multiply this all by two, and that gives us one minus two minus one. And then we put this in the correct form. So the correct form is going to be in square brackets, one, two bar, one bar. And that is the first vector. Going to the next one, Again, picking this as our, the tail as our origin, x, y, z. To get to the, the tip of the vector, of the arrow, we have to go minus 1x minus 1y plus one half Z. So that's going to be minus one, minus one, one half. To get rid of the fraction, we multiply by two. And that's going to give us two bar, two bar, one. <clears throat> Okay, let's go to the third one. Picking this, the tail as the origin. X, Y, Z. To get to the tip, we go plus one X minus one Y and zero Z. So plus one, minus one, zero, which is one, one bar, zero. Okay, going to the <clears throat> fourth. Defining the tail of the arrow as our origin, x, y, Z, we have to travel minus one half X minus one Y and zero Z. So minus one half minus one zero multiply by two to get rid of the fraction. And that gives us one bar 
two bar zero. Okay, the fifth vector, fifth arrow, setting the origin, x, y, z, to get to the tip, we have to go minus one x, minus one y, minus one z, so minus one, minus one, minus one is one bar, one bar, one bar. And the last, <clears throat> the last direction, x, y, z, to get to the tip, we go zero x, minus one y, minus one half z. So that's zero minus one minus one half multiplied by two to get zero two bar one bar again in square brackets. So that's how we identify uh, these directions. Okay, let's go to the next page. And the next page, we're going to draw in the directions. So we got square brackets, we know their, their directions. So we're going to go one, 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 and it's fairly easy for us to start in this back corner as our origin, x, y, z. So we can go plus x, one, plus y, one, plus z, one. And then our vector, we start with the tail at the origin and the tip where we ended. And that is our one, one, one direction. Notice the one, one, one direction is that way and the one bar, one bar, one bar is exactly the opposite. So if you take any of these vectors or any of these uh, Miller index directions and you multiply by minus one, you just change the sign overall. So that's the one, one, one. Okay, let's now do uh, the one bar zero one direction. So we could start back here in the back corner again, but if we do that, it's really tough for us to, you know, draw, you know, negative x, right? Because we have to draw into the page. So the fact that we've got a, a one bar uh, for the x, that tells us that we should start somewhere on this front plane. And we don't have any negatives there, so that means we can start over here. So let's, let's pick this as our origin. x, y, Z. So now we say that from the origin we go minus 1x, we go 0y, and we go plus 1z. So that makes this our direction. Now, you should note that if we picked this as our origin instead, well, then we'd go plus x, plus uh, z, and we'd have that. These two are exactly the same direction, 
I mean, they run parallel to each other. So it doesn't matter where you uh, draw the origin, you're going to wind up with the same vector. <clears throat> and the way that you should think about this in terms of a crystal is if you imagine yourself taking this crystal and, and rotating it so you're looking in that direction, well, whether you look here or here or here or here, you're going to have the same picture. So the directions are basically telling you, so, okay, you're standing inside the crystal and you look in the, you know, HKL direction, whatever those vectors, whatever those numbers are. Well, it doesn't matter where the origin is. You're going to have the same picture. So now let's go to third. So that gives us uh, one, two bar two. And uh, we have a, a number larger than one. So in order to do, get rid of that, in order to make it possible for us to draw our entire vector inside the unit cell, we're going to divide by two. So we're going to have one half minus one plus one. If we say, take that by one half. So now we have all of our uh, values less than, all of our values less than one. And, uh, so x is in the in the plus direction, so we can start uh, back in the back plane. Uh, y is negative, so if we start over here, then we're going to be drawing vectors over on this side. So instead, we're going to push ourselves over to this area, and then our uh, z is plus, so we'll start in the bottom. So we'll have this as our origin, x, y, z. And it says we go one half x, one half minus one y, and then plus one z. So that's the tip of our vector or the tip of our direction. So this is the one, two bar, two direction. Okay, coming to the fourth. Again, three is bigger than one, so we multiply by one third, and that's going to give us zero, one third, one. They're all positive. Go to the back left corner. X, Y, Z. <clears throat> so if we go zero, in the x direction, one third in the y direction, about right there, and then one in the z direction. And we draw our vector in. Like that. So that is the zero, one, three direction. Let's look at the zero, zero, one bar direction. Okay, so in the X and the Y, we're not gonna go anywhere, so we'll just keep ourselves in that, in that back. Uh, but we're going in the minus Z direction. So that means that it's gonna be a lot easier if we work from that top plane. So let's pick that as our tail. And then the direction we're going is zero X, x, y, z, zero in the x direction, zero in the y direction, and one, minus one, in the z direction. It's going to be down here. So that is our zero, zero, one bar direction. And the last direction, three, one, one, Get rid of the three by multiplying by one third to get one, one third, one third. Pick the back corner as our origin. X, Y, Z. So we go one in the X direction. 
one third in the Y and one third in the Z. So it's kind of tough to see the way uh, the angle is, but it's basically going from this back corner to the front face, like that. Uh, again, it's not a very clear picture just because of the angle, but hopefully you can see from the trace that we go one, one third, one third. So that is how we deal with uh, Miller index directions. <clears throat> Let's now look at planes. So these planes, uh, you know, when I made them in uh, PowerPoint, I had these lines drawn in, uh, but apparently converting them to PDF, we lost some of that resolution. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to draw them in, but you'll have to, you'll have to use uh, some of your uh, you know, engineering visualization skills to, to realize uh, kind of where they are, but you can see where they, where they cut the box fairly easily. You know, I think before we do this, uh, let's do the exercise where we identify, we draw the planes. I think that might be easier to, to follow. So we'll do this first. Okay, so here I've given you the, the planes and we'll draw them in the box. So first one is one, one, one. So in order to figure out where it intercepts the axis, we have to take uh, the inverse of that so you raise that to the minus one, which means that we have one over one, one over one, one over one, which is equal to one, one, one. So it intercepts the X at one, the Y at one, and the Z at one. We pick that as our origin. Z, so X, Y, Z, got a right-handed axis. It intercepts the X at one, it intercepts the Y at one, and it intercepts the Z at one. So let's draw our plane now. Okay. So this is the uh, the plane. Let's try the next one. So this is one bar zero one. We take the inverse of that. That gives us uh, one over minus one, um, one over zero, and one over one. So that is minus one, infinity, one. So it intercepts the x axis at minus one, the y axis at infinity, so it's parallel to the y axis, and it intercepts the z axis at plus one. So we can pick you know, our origin anywhere uh, because we need an intercept at minus uh, 1x. That means it's gonna be most convenient to pick something in the front here. And it intercepts z at the plus one. So that means it's more convenient to pick something on the bottom. So let's pick this point right here is our origin. Z. So it intercepts X at minus one. So right there. It intercepts Y at infinity. So I can't draw that anywhere. And it intercepts Z at plus one. So that's the intercept. So if I've got some plane 
where that's part of my plane and it goes all the way out to infinity, well, that means that my plane is actually defined by this. Can you see that? This plane, which cuts through uh, kind of this diagonal of the box, it runs parallel to the y-axis, so it never cuts the y-axis, and it cuts the x-axis here and the z-axis here, so minus 1 and uh, plus 1. If I picked my origin to be here instead, I could have done the same thing, right? Because I could have had this be x, z, y. So regardless of whether I picked here or here as my origin, I would still have an intercept at minus 1 and plus 1. <clears throat> okay, let's now go to the third. So this third is 1, 2 bar, 2. So if I take the inverse of that, that gives me 1 over 1, 1 over minus 2, 1 over 2. So it intercepts the x-axis at plus 1, the y-axis at minus 1 half, and the z-axis at plus 1 half. So the fact that we've got a, a plus positive x-intercept means the back plane makes the most sense. The fact that we've got a plus z-intercept means the bottom plane makes the most sense. And the fact that we have a negative y-intercept means the right makes the most sense. Therefore, I'm going to pick my origin here. X, Y, Z. So I have an X intercept at plus one here. I have a Y intercept at minus one half, which looks like about right here. And I have a Z intercept of plus one half it's about right there. So my plane is So that's my plane, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half. <clears throat> okay, the third one, take the inverse, or sorry, the fourth one, take the inverse. That gives us 1 over 0, 1 over 1, 1 over 1 third, which is infinity, 1, 1 third. So now... Uh, we know that the x-axis is going to cross at infinity. The y-axis is going to cross at plus 1, and the z-axis at plus 1 third. So that means going to the back left a corner. That's a good place for us to make our origin. x, y, z. X crosses at infinity, so we can't draw it. Uh, y crosses at 1, so that's right there. And Z crosses at 1 third, which is about right here. So we have this line as part of our plane. And because this plane is going to extend in the z direction and never, sorry, in the x direction and never cross x. That means that it can go like this. And this is going to be our plane. Like that. And again, if I had picked this front as my origin here, then I would still have a y-intercept of plus 1 and a z-intercept of plus 1 third. Okay. The fifth problem, 0, 0, 1 bar. 
take the inverse, and that gives me an intercept at infinity, infinity minus one. Okay, well, uh, I know that uh, I can't say anything about x or y, except that they never cross, and uh, the z, we know, crosses down here at minus one, so I'm gonna pick my origin somewhere on the top. So I'm gonna pick up here in the back left, top. So that is x, y, z. It never crosses x, never crosses y, and it crosses z here at minus one. So the plane that cuts through that point never crosses x, never crosses y, is this plane. It's the face of the cube. So this is uh, the plane that runs parallel to the xy plane and uh, crosses z down here. And lastly, we'll go to 3, 1, 1. Taking the inverse, we get 1 3rd, 1, 1. Okay, we'll pick x, y, z. Crosses x at 1 3rd, about right there. Crosses y at 1. Crosses z at 1. Draw in our plane, our makeshift ruler. And this is our three, one, one plane. Okay, so now let's go to the, the last page in which we're going to uh, identify these planes. And that, that, I think, is a little bit more tricky. Uh, I'll show you some of the tricks, though. And as I said, I'm sorry that the uh, this cut off some of the, the images. <clears throat> So let's start um, So let's start here. Okay, so you got this plane and uh, we want to look for an origin that allows us to talk about uh, intercepting the uh, the axis. And you know, again, you can pick any, but if you pick, you know, for example, the back uh, right corner, then you're going to have to extend this plane up and imagine where it cuts. Starting here, though, we have uh, natural uh, places where the axis are cut. So we have our x, y, z. Again, it's a right-handed coordinate system. It cuts the x-axis at minus 1. It cuts the y-axis at plus 1. And it cuts the z-axis at minus 1 half. OK. So that means we have minus one, plus one, minus one half. We take the inverse of that, and that's going to give us uh, minus one, plus one, minus two. And putting that in the proper notation, that is one bar, one, two bar. So this plane is the one bar, one, two bar plane. Okay, let's do this one next. <clears throat> and again, we want something where uh, 
we get natural axis being cut. Um, and this one, notice that, well, it runs parallel to this axis, which is going to be our Y axis. So let's make this front our origin. X, Y, Z. It's going to cut the X axis at minus one half. It cuts the Y axis, well, out at infinity. And it cuts the Z axis at plus one. So we have minus one half infinity plus one. We take the inverse of that. So we get, you know, one over minus one half, one over infinity, and one over one, which gives us uh, minus two, zero, one. And putting that in the proper notation, two bar, zero, one. So this plane is the two bar, zero, one plane. <clears throat> okay, let's do one that's a little more tricky. I would say that this and this are both a little bit more tricky than the others. And, and the reason they're tricky is because you have to translate the plane slightly in order to get uh, the right answer. So let's, let's look at that. Now I'm, I'm trying to pick an origin. And it's like, well, I can't really pick one there. It doesn't cut and doesn't cut there. Uh, where does it cut? Well, this seems to be about the closest I can get. If I were to put my axis here, x, y, z, and that, that's the closest I can get. Now, one way that I could determine where it cuts because it, it cuts the z, the x there, and it cuts the z there, but the y, well, one thing I could do is I could extend that. And, and that's what I showed in class. Another thing that I can do is I can take this entire plane and I can rigidly shift it. So for example, if I could shift this entire plane by say, I don't know, one third in that direction, that looks kind of like one third, well, what that's going to do is it's going to shift that one third. It's going to shift this one third. And that line, if you look at that line, it cuts right through the center of the, of the diagonal. Well, that means that if that's distance is two thirds, so is this. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm shifting my plane Let's see those lines are parallel and these lines are parallel. They're parallel. And then also, uh, like that, there we go. So now I've got a, a plane that, which has just been rigidly shifted here. And when I uh, had that shift, now I have an x-intercept that is two-thirds, so that's minus two-thirds. I have a, a y-intercept, which is plus one. And I have a z-intercept, which is plus two-thirds. We can see that plus two thirds. So, okay, let's put this out to say minus two thirds um, plus one plus two thirds. Take the inverse of that. So I'm going to get minus 
three halves, one, three halves. We don't want fractions, right? So we're gonna take this entire thing, multiply by two to get minus three, two, three. So the notation in, in the proper notation is gonna be three bar, two, three. And that's uh, this plane. I wanna point something out to you though. Um, so this is our, our, our plane. I wanna point out that we can go backwards now. So I'm gonna trace uh, one of these planes on a blank sheet of paper or one of the, these cubes. So I've got a cube and uh, let's draw the three bar to three plane here. Okay, if we do that, first thing we do is take the inverse. So that gives us uh, minus one third, one half, one third. Okay, <clears throat> how, do we, uh, how do we get at that? Well. Uh, we know it's got to cut the x at, at minus one third, so that means we want to be in this in this front plane, and plus y and plus z. So we'll pick this as our origin, and that means that I've got x, y, z, and I cut x at minus one third, which is right here. I cut y at one half, which is right here. And I cut Z at one third, which is like right here. So trying to draw this in. That is our plane. So what I'm hoping you can see though, is that this plane, which I had drawn originally, and the second, which is the shifted plane, and the third, which is the one I just drew, those three planes are all parallel to each other, right? Because if I, if I take this plane and I shift it, you know, rigidly uh, outward, so this goes by, you know, cuts that corner, well, that cuts that corner, multiply by two, then this gets multiplied by two, this gets multiplied by two. And now, pardon my terrible drawing, but I have that plane, which is the same as this. So when we're identifying the planes, we're actually identifying all of these planes and uh, that are, are parallel to each other. So just as in the directions I said, you imagine yourself, you imagine yourself um, looking in the direction and regardless of, of where you're looking, you're looking in the same direction. When you think about looking at uh, planes, you actually can imagine yourself kind of looking at, at uh, the planes kind of on, on the edge. And regardless of whether you say the plane is here or here or here or here or here, uh, it has the same geometry relative to the unit cell. So that's that's why it, it's gonna have the uh, uh, the same shape, whether it's drawn here or here or here. And that means that we can identify it uh, by any of those and it'll still be okay. Okay, so let's, uh, let's draw in uh, this this plane next. Again, I'm very sorry for these being uh, 
disrupted the way they are, but fortunately, you're engineering students, which means that you're supposed to have uh, the ability to infer content from what you're given. Um, okay, so that's our, our, our picture. Uh, you know, picking an origin, you know, the back corner, that seems to make a lot of sense. X, Y, Z cuts X at plus one, cuts Y, well, it doesn't, so it goes to infinity, and it cuts Z at plus one, which means that we have one infinity, one, take the inverse, and we have one, zero, one. That's our, our solution for that plane. Next plane. Okay. So this one, X, Y, Z, it cuts X at one, it cuts Y at one, and it cuts Z at one. So that's going to be one, one, one is our plane. And I think we should note here that you know, that one, 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 well, what if you draw the normal to that one, one, one? What, what line? So remember from your, your multivariable calculus class or what will be your multivariable calculus class, uh, actually, you probably saw this in, in a trig, that if you have a plane and you've got a normal to that plane, that the normal defines the plane. Well, if we have a cubic structure like this and we draw that line, it goes from one corner of the box to the other. That direction is one, one, one. So that means that the direction one, one, one is normal to the plane one, one, one. And that's something that's actually pretty useful uh, when we're thinking about crystals. Interestingly, we can have another vector that goes from this corner through to that, right? And that direction was one bar, one bar, one bar. So we have two directions identifying the same plane. What does that mean? Well, it means that the one, one, one plane and the one bar, one bar, one bar plane are actually the same. So if I asked you to draw both those planes, you could draw them just once. And the difference is whether the normal is going out or the normal is going in. So that, that's something that's pretty handy. Now, if you start going to geometries that are not cubic, um, then you have to start thinking a little bit different about it, uh, but there's still ways to, to translate that, that basic principle. Okay, so let's, let's, go to this, let's go to this last one. And I think this one, at least from my perspective, is, is one of the tougher ones to, to do. So let me, uh, again, fill in our gaps. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Well, this, this looks like around two thirds of that distance. Um, you know, I don't have any easy origin, but I, I think that possibly the easiest is to pick that back corner. And let's do that. Let's define that as our back corner. So that's X, Y, and Z. And now we're going to, I mean, we could, you know, figure out where this intercepts by drawing it out. But I think what's going to be easier is for us to draw 
a new plane by shifting this. So basically giving a rigid shift by two thirds in the uh, negative y direction. So if we do that, then this becomes, let me pick a different color so we can see it better. This point shifts to here. The y point shifts two thirds, so it shifts to here. And the z point, because that line cuts right through the box, that means that that length and that length have to be equal. So that means this also has to be one third. So our new plane is going to look like this. And it intercepts x at plus 1, y at 1 third, and z at one third. So we have the plane uh, one, one third, one third. Take the inverse of that and take the inverse that gives us one, three, three. So that is that plane, which is equivalent to the one we had before. So sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit of, of you know, looking and visualization to determine the origin and uh, to shift the planes. But uh, in general, uh, it's really not that tough and a little bit, little bit of practice, for example, here, or, or you can look up on the internet, you know, Miller index practice problems, and, and you should be able to find, you know, literally thousands of these uh, that you can, you can experiment with at home. With that, uh, have a great evening and I will see you in class on Tuesday.